everybody. How's it going? Dan Schinder here on Yes Shift with Steven Schinder. And, and we, yeah, go ahead, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a couple of guests with us. We've got Clive Bailey, a founding member of Mabel Greer's Toy Shop, and Max Hunt, who joined Mabel Greer's Toy Shop later on, um, about several years ago, I think, and was also has also performed in Yes Truby Band Fragile, and they have a new album together under the band name Affirm titled One More Moment. Um, so yeah, thanks for being on the show, both of you. Yeah, welcome Thank you guys. guys. Yeah, and you know, I, I want our viewers and listeners to know, just because we've got, you know, like we're two generations doing this show, so there's two or three generations of viewers and listeners. If you're not familiar with Mabel Greer's toy shop, it's basically the pot, the soil, and the seed that grew the yes tree, I think it's fair to say. Wouldn't that be right, Clive? Well, I like to think that. I mean, <laughs> you know, no, it's true, actually. So uh, we started in 1966 with Bob Hager, and uh, Bob and I got together and said, let's, let's do some music. And then Chris Squire joined us. And Bob was the drummer. Yeah, Bob was yeah. drummer, Chris Squire on bass, uh, John Anderson joined us as a singer, and uh, I think Tony Kay was there, and then Peter Banks, so in various stages. So we, we rehearsed at a place called the Lucky Horseshoe in Shaftesbury Avenue. Um, I think I was 16 at the time. I was, I was the baby, basically. Oh, wow. That's so, awesome. Yeah, yeah. and... Um, but we wrote, we started doing lots of music and, and it was great. But I left the band, I think in 68, just as it was turning into Yes, which is a, probably a much safer name than Mabel Greer's Toy Shop. <laughs> Where and, did that uh, name come from, Mabel Greer's Toy Shop? Both the drummer came up with it and it, his excuse was it was Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Well, if you've got a, la a name like that, why don't you come up with yeah. a band? <laughs> you know, it was very psychedelic. We were into yeah. psychedelic. We were playing all the clubs like UFO, Marquee, Covent, uh, Electric Garden, the big psychedelic music scene. So we were taking psychedelic music and putting rock and harmony behind it. And that was where that whole proggy sound came from, really. Mm. Like, Interesting. Yeah. You, all, you guys had already started uh, experimenting with putting classical motifs in, in the songs, hadn't you, at that time? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I was very fond of uh, Mahler and uh, also um, actually a bit of Debussy as well, for sort of complete contrast. But I was always trying to get classical stuff in there. But um, it was interesting nice. because... I like playing music in the moment. And of course, I used to drive Chris and John absolutely mental because I never played the same thing twice. <laughs> it was like, what are you doing? You know, you said to play that. Yeah, I don't feel like it. You know, that's, that's funny. That's <laughs> I have one more question about the, that history before we go on to talk about your exciting new album that, like I say, Steve and I have both listened to it. When you through the years after yes has been around through all these incarnations and you've heard the stories of how laborious the process was discussing for half an hour whether a note should be b or b flat and chris always being late when you hear those stories do you go yep that's how it was back then they've they've always been the same or is that something that came later like was the process you lived through basically what we've kind of known through those early and and maybe classic years of yes I love Bill Bruford's comment on that when he said uh, uh, when he joined King Crimson, they had the same argument, and he and they said, "Well, you're just expected to know this is King Crimson. You know that B goes with G or whatever." You know, so, <laughs> right? What that was a great comment of Bill Bruford. Yeah, but, uh, I think a classic actually. But uh, what was it like? Well, no, Chris. Well, he had a flat in uh, Fulham, so we used to meet up there. So and then from there go on. So. No, he wasn't. I don't remember Chris being late for rehearsals at all, actually. Um, I used to live in Kingston and come up by train um, and then come up to London, which is about 30 miles, 20 miles, something like that. So maybe I was late a few times because of a train or something. But no, Chris was, wasn't that bad when I was there. So and, he took um, over that role when you left as the late guy. 
And uh, Peter, <laughs> Peter, Peter Banks was the was uh, took over from me, and uh, then Steve Howe took. No, over. I mean as the late guy, as the oh, Christy. as the late guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it's the late guy. I don't. I mean, it's a long time ago. It's like fifty something years. You know? Yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe Clive, you might girls. have just been. Uh, you might have just been even later than Chris. I think. <laughs> and <probably>. not known. <laughs> That's maybe, pretty. I don't funny. know. <laughs> and I, I, I would say, what do you mean? I've just travelled twenty miles by train to be here. <laughs> That's <laughs> funny. So, talking about names, what's the story behind the name Affirm? Um, really, it's a bit cheeky because we thought, yeah. sort of, well, you know, you got yes, so you you can't have no. So what do you have? Well, <laughs> affirm, affirm. <laughs> so the idea is, it's I didn't affirm. know it was that blatant. That's great. Yeah, it's blatant. Oh, yeah, that's what I figured. <laughs> yeah, right, right, pretty obvious. But we really needed a, a more of a, a band name identity, I think, with this project. Even though we're mainly a duo, we do include other musicians in what we're doing. Right, and you're splitting the instrumentation between the two of you. Yeah, well, and and other guests that perform with us, you know. Yes. So we are we have got an ambition to perform uh, live, you know. Oh, things. great! I was going to ask that. Can you kind of yeah. spell that out? How that might unfold, Max? Not really. Uh, I mean, we're we're more or less at the point where we're ready to start formulating that now. Okay, great. Um, we've got musicians that. Both Clive and I know that that can join us. Um, nice. Uh, and a real key thing is uh, that we're looking for prom promoters and, and uh, agents. Yeah, if you know, if you know anyone offering. out there that wants yeah. to get involved, we're we're looking for someone to basically say, you know what? Let's put the, let's give these guys a tour. It doesn't have to be a big tour. We just want to get out there and play the music. So and you know any any help gratefully received. We'd love to play some gigs. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. I mean, uh, another thing I'm thinking about, because uh, as you may have noticed, the album is, is quite orchestrated in, in many places. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, I'm, into, I'm actually working with some orchestras here in Germany. So one thing I'm looking into is actually getting uh, arts funding to fund performances, possibly with an orchestra. That, that could be a really exciting process. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. Uh, here, here, we do have uh, artistic funding for projects like that so that is a possibility i think you know so that's great awesome steve uh, yeah another thing we were wondering is uh, how would you describe your music on um, like the genre i suppose yeah and steve your volume dropped down you might want to check that oh, well okay. i I would I would describe it as truly progressive in that to me progressive rock doesn't mean playing what you played all those years ago. I mean we we all have different views on that, but progressive to me means it's got to progress. And what does that mean? Well, you know the progression is it's got to keep changing. A bit like David Bowie always changed what he did. You know, so I'm all for experimenting, and so is Max. You know, coming up with sort of well. Why don't we do something completely wacky and um, do this or that? And that's one part. The other thing is, for me, I mean, I, I'm very taken with people like Hans Zimmer for, you know, film music and like use of the brass and uh, the violin. So a, a lot of stuff I put together is completely over-orchestrated. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, let's chuck in more violins or let's chuck in more cellos. So, <laughs> I think in genres, there's there's a uh, what we've managed to do is fuse various different things: um, some classical music, a bit of Eastern music, a bit of rock music, a bit of early prog, a bit of psych. And we just put it all together, and probably because of our combined age and we've gone through all those things, that uh, it just yeah. comes out. It just happens if if you let go and don't think I'm going to write this. If you just let it flow. It's amazing what comes out in the moment. Yeah. So if you can capture how you feel in the moment and get yeah. that down musically, then you're on, you're on to it. You're, yeah, you're yeah. In, the groove, yeah. in the groove. I think um, uh, One More Moment definitely uh, uh, is a development on From Whispers, our first album, uh, a couple of years ago, in that Whispers still had a little bit more psychedelic and well, a little bit more psychedelic influence yeah. in some yeah. of the tracks. 
Yeah. And um, that sort of has gone into elements of One More Moment. I mean, the track uh, Flower of Love, mm -hmm. the, uh, with the spoken word and, and very, very sort of therapeutic and spiritual and, you know, there's an element of, of psychedelic in that. Yeah. But, uh, and an element of therapy as well, I, I think, you know. It's, That's uh, such a great way to put it. Yeah. But um, uh, it definitely, for me, it is uh, a more cohesive album. It, everything's come more together into one sound. So I really think we're starting to develop, to develop our sounds now on this album, you know. So. How much of that came out of working on the first album versus the time spent in between the two albums mm -hmm. versus sitting down to do the new album. What, do you know if you can credit that process, this newer process cohesiveness to either of those? I mean, I, well, I've been working constantly in the studios uh, since 2018, basically, and even more so during the COVID lockdown. Uh, right. So I've been looking at trying to improve and expand everything I'm doing during that time and producing one after one album after another after another you know so they kept your chops up um, yeah uh, and the thing is Clive also contributed um, his vocals and songwriting to a couple of tracks on the first fragile album uh, called golden fragments that was, that was um, st work on that started back in 2017 Oh, that's uh, great. It wasn't wasn't actually released until 2020, but there was a bit of an interruption because I was living in the UK at that time and then moved over to Germany and then restarted that project. Um, I mean, that all gave us some, some experience in, in sound, you know, on my side of things. Uh, one of my big heroes is Vangelis. Oh, as a, as yeah, multi-instrumentalist and, and keyboard. Yeah, we player. just did a special on him the other day. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But his his ability to create symphonic landscapes yeah. using synthesizers, uh, in particular, uh, way back in the seventies before yeah. anyone else was doing it. You know, that's the thing. And uh, also, also with with some of the music, I mean, went through the pandemic and, and earlier. I've been playing around with the whole sort of symphonic kind of stuff and uh you know listening to a lot of zimmer and a, and a lot of music uh film music so i've been playing around with some metaphysical sort of stuff with more spiritual and and symphonic and then I, so i had quite a few ideas there and then I, max and i got together and it was very i had a lot of melody lines already down with um stuff I've been working on earlier. So basically we said, well, okay, now let, let's take some of that and how do, how, do we, how do we rock that up or prog that up or whatever you want to say. So it was pretty fast. When we got together, we could move really quickly because we had lots of ideas and then we took those ideas and, just, and, and changed them around a bit, and swung them around a bit. And what came out then was a definite sound that was our sound, I think. Yeah, um, I think more, more so on this album than the last yeah. album, which is great. I love, I love um, Whispers, but that was definitely more finding our way, wasn't it? Yeah, I think you know, yeah. and yeah. A, and a slower process. This we actually, mm. Clive had developed a lot of ideas. That we got together for a week here in Germany in October last year, laid down probably about sixty percent of the album. Yeah. Oh, decided wow. that at that time. In a week. Uh, actually, <laughs> what form it was going to take, pretty much. And then I did a lot of work in between, and Clive had another trip over here in, uh, in was it Fe February or March, I think, Clive? Um, Something like that, yeah. We, uh, so we worked we very quickly together. Yeah, yeah. This was much quicker much... and much more cohesive, the way it came together. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Good. Steve? So... You are, I know you've got a whole bunch of questions. Yeah, well, one of the songs on the album, um, on One More Moment, is titled Rainy Days in California. And it's it's very um, laid back compared to, you know, it begins with rain and thunder, but it's actually very relaxing and whatnot. And one of the things I was wondering is whether there's a particular place or time that inspired rainy days in California. Uh, 
the whole sort of uh, the lyrics. I mean, rainy days in California. Strangely, we had that ready to go about four years ago, but Bob hated it <laughs> in Mabel Greer. And when we were doing it the last album, we said, "No, we're not playing that. I'm not playing that." Which bless him, you know. I thought, okay, fair enough. And because uh, I think Max, we did actually put some pre-recordings down on that when you yeah. were here in Oxfordshire, I think. Yeah, so, absolutely, yeah. So, but then, and Max kept on bugging me, said, Clive, it's a really good song, you should do that, you should do that. And I said, yeah, but Bob hates it. <laughs> Sorry, Bob, if you're listening. But then, you know, we actually put it down again and Peter put some pretty good guitar on there, and uh, which was great. He's a really good guitarist. and. Um, the inspiration really comes out of love songs. It's like, I miss you in California. And, you know, that, I guess the inspiration is uh, the, the, the sort of, the album is very much sort of love, lost love, longing. And then you can move into the metaphysical aspects of love, more roomy-esque, if you like. Um, but it was, it's all based around that, the idea of, true love, lost love, found love. And Rainy Days in California is kind of a, a bit of a relief from some of the very heavy music and songs we've got on mm, the album. Yeah. So it kind of lightens it up a bit. You, know, you get halfway through the album, you think, you know, I can't take it anymore. And then Rainy Days comes along, which is like, oh, okay. You know, it's the respite a bit yeah, from yeah. the din. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting. So, for, for, for me, I... I well, I, I'm quite a, a fan of Santana, and obviously um, there's a lot of history with Santana and California. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So the song, the song was a little bit Santana-esque, oh. and we didn't ask Peter to play like Carlos, but he just took the chords, and what can you do with chords like that? It sort of ended up sounding just a little bit like that, you know. And, nice, uh, yeah. I could see so that. From, from the musical side of things, I loved the feel of the track. Um, and a little bit of the, a connection with the uh, Santana uh, history with California, uh, the Californian music scene sort of thing, you know? So, That's cool. Yeah. That's kind of unexpected I, for most people, I think, you know. I miss California a lot. I mean, I, I haven't really been back to the States a few times, but not, nothing like I used to, and I, I miss California. And, Where in California uh, did you spend most of your time, Clive? Uh, San Francisco, L.A., La Jolla, um, oh. yeah. Just yeah my, sort of... my other son lives in San Diego, and Steve was born in Ventura, on the, near, oh, right. right near the beach. We lived in oh. Ventura um, for 14 years, something like wow. that. So, yeah. I miss, I miss it. I miss California. It's a great, great place. And, I don't miss uh... the traffic. <laughs> oh, well, no. In, in L.A. particularly. Yeah, keep the traffic. No, and the gas yeah. prices. What's the, yeah. hey, you must remember we're living in, well, I am living in Great Britain, you know, and the, the weather is hit or miss. So yeah. when it's raining and it's dark, you know, it's a leaden sky in, in um, UK, and then you, it, being a Brit, it's like, what am I doing? You know, rain, and then you transpose, well, Maybe they've got rainy days in California as well. Maybe it's not so bad. <laughs> not like Britain. Yeah. <laughs> a bit warmer. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Mu much of this album deals with those themes, you know, like you said, of romance. And I suppose it's fitting that there would be this Romeo and Juliet painting by Frank Dixie as the cover. Oh, what was the decision making like behind that were there other paintings that were considered as well have that go down yeah, yeah there, there were, were. Um, so, so it was um we're both fans of pre-raphaelite uh, artwork that's one thing i had at one stage of my life i had a greeting card company and it was based in california in walnut creek or that was the distribution angle of it so and, and had lots of Raphaelite paintings, wood, water house, and uh, loads of them. And I think I, 
I sent a few of them over to you, Max, and you said, yeah, that's all very good, but what about this one? And Max found the um, the one we've used. And it's perfect. Oh, yeah, the Dixie one, yeah. It's perfect because it is Romeo and Juliet. I think the conversation went, I think I said, it's it's about Romeo and Juliet, you know, and, and Max rightly said, well, what you've sent is not Romeo and Juliet. And said, but well, this it, it, it didn't have any couples, did it? That <laughs> Images were only individual Romeo. people, so <laughs> Romeo. The thing is, ro romance is definitely two people together, at least, you know. So, well, uh, we, oh, never mind. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> it's, <sure. laughs> it's a family show. It's a beautiful cover. It is. Thank you. Steve and I were yeah. both taken by it and uh, oh, okay. talked about it when he sent me everything over to listen. I went, oh wow, that's beautiful. My mother was an artist, and my wife is uh -oh. an artist, so. Oh, wonderful. Um, very much appreciating the artwork, yeah. And that's a, you know, they say don't judge a book by its cover, but I think for books, for albums, it's it's just like a meal. We we see a meal mm. the way it's plated and put together before we ever taste it. And how many mm. times have we seen in a movie, on TV, or in real life, someone brings a meal and it's like, eh, because they don't like yeah, the yeah. cover. So it's it's a very integral part, as we know. Album it art is, through the is. decades has been very integral, and this it's, was a great choice. It's sadly something that they don't like the cover. Miss, yeah, it's, it's a very integral part, as we know. Oh, well, thanks for yeah. that because I yeah, it does look, look beautiful every time I look yeah. at it. I think wow, it's really nice and yeah, yeah. Works. Sadly, so many people don't buy albums nowadays, do they? So they don't have yeah. that experience because. Uh, it is an artist, a whole artistic experience, really. Plus, it's only this big now. Yeah, yeah. In most cases, I mean, vinyl's kind of coming back, but still, in most cases, mm -hmm. it's been reduced to something so small. I literally keep this handy to read liner notes yeah, even yeah. with my reading glasses on. Yeah, I can't read yeah, anything I, anymore. I was trying to read the lyrics earlier on, and I was, you know, having to get, do it that far away yeah. to read it, basically. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I've, I've read them all out just in case. <laughs> That's smart. <laughs> questions about the lyrics, you know, because I can't read it on the album either. Right. The, the lyrics are great. I love how the album comes full circle because it begins with, you know, overflowing. It talks about the dawn of a new day. And I normally associate, you know, when people depict the dawn of a new day, it's usually a positive thing, right? But it feels very isolating the way it's talked about and i think lots of people can relate to that but then on the final track um journey to the sunshine it's very much you know looking forward to a new day so i quite like how it went full circle in that cool. way yeah that was actually quite a creative process between both of the, both of us deciding the album order uh, and it does mm. make some sense i think it's quite interesting yeah I think that first track might be my favorite too. Yeah. Um, the the production and everything. Is it self produced? It's self produced, right? You guys yeah, yeah. produced it? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, Steve, why don't you if, you, if you guys don't mind, I know that sometimes we don't like to be compared to certain things, but I think sometimes sure. to give someone a contextual reference of, well, who do sure. they sound like? Yeah, you know, yeah. so if, if, I don't know yeah, what you yeah. guys think, but Steve, why don't you give your take? I'll give mine. And then if you guys want to say no, it's nothing like, that, you know, whatever <laughs> you want or chime in with your, your bit. But Steve, cool. what, what's your uh, how would you describe it from someone from Mars or Wyoming who hasn't heard it yet? Well, I know that on the final track, there's a keyboard bit toward the end that reminded me of Genesis, you know, the do -do 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 -do. like it sounds very similar to that sort of sort of thing which oh, i guess yeah, makes yeah. sense given what max was playing to us oh, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah we got a little further yeah. before we started that was cool yeah and the beginning of the third track um i believe it's uh no it's not that one. oh who am i like the very beginning of it kind of reminds me of the type of production that Peter Gabriel might use on some of his songs. Oh yeah, yeah. I could hear that. Yeah, and these are all compliments, yeah. by the way. <laughs> Thank right. you. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> Ta taken as such. Yeah, I like but, a bit I mean, of for me. But actually, for both of us, Peter Gabriel is. Um, we're both quite big fans of Peter Gabriel. Okay. Aren't we, nice. Clive? 
I used to, I used to hang out with Genesis when they were pra rehearsing in 1967 or eight, whenever it was. Oh wow! Eight, I think. Very early. Uh, uh, Christmas Cottage and down in Surrey, and I've always loved Genesis. I mean, I, that kind of music, and uh, for me, it was uh, yes was good, obviously, and Genesis and Pink Floyd later. Although with Pink Floyd, when we were gigging with them and everything, they were very psychedelic, and they turned into that great guitar sound, which again, blah blah blah. But I think both Max and I love that kind of orchestral flavor and then of course the timing is really important that you know that strings come in and create a rhythm cello comes in it's not only a rhythm it's a melody line in the rhythm so i think when yeah, you've got, or a melodic rhythm yeah yeah, yeah. so rather yeah, than just like let's have five different rhythms let's have four or five rhythms but each rhythm is a different melody yeah the melody line so uh, i'm you know, yeah I'm very interested in world music as well, you know, and that's... Oh, nice. Me too. As you might um, be able to see. Yeah, yeah. I've got some djembies in the room next door. It's funny. Nice. I, I, run, I run some rainforest music workshops, basically. Oh, for kids, nice. So it's great yeah. fun. My um, sort of soundscape reference was a combination of Inkelbert, Humperdinck, Helen Reddy, and Nickelback. <laughs> <laughs> no, for me, for me, I think uh, one of the first things that I sort of felt like, oh, I hear hints of this was, and the, I think the orchestration has a lot to do with it, was that side of Moody Blues in a way I kind of heard. And then the big sound production that comes with that and the rhythmic aspect, that's the first yeah. thing that I felt a bit of familiarity with. However, no mistake, people firm is its own sound and the album definitely is its own sound and it's great and the, one of the first things i listened for as a musician and someone who's produced and all that stuff is the production and i think the production is fantastic because there's been some great music recorded over the years and i'm going to use one of our favorite bands yes as an example and steve's heard me harp on this for years the difference between the way tormato sounds and then the next album, Drama, is the difference mm. between playing in a cardboard box and a well-tuned theater just blasting. I mean, the difference is unbelievable. So mm. I really mm. always love appreciating what my sensibilities recognize as really good production. And that means something right. different to everybody. But I noticed yeah. that right away, like, oh, this is big, and it's there's some thickness here, and oh, I love yeah. those sounds. Uh, and, think, and then I there's think... the music. I think, blame, I think we can blame Max for that. So because I'm the guy that keeps on saying, Max, let's let's add this string section. Let's add this cello. Let's add this. Let's add, let's add, let's have three guitars. Let's have two bass guitars. And Max is like, <laughs> he's got to sort that out yeah. and sort the sounds out. And and I've got to say, you've done a great job in doing that because there's a lot in there that and it could be a huge amount. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can it's been a, a unique challenge in that respect, actually. I mean, yeah. There, there are there are tracks where we've got a, a bass line on a bass guitar with uh, bass pedals underneath and a nice. melody played on another bass guitar yeah. uh, above that, together with a drum kit and uh, a Middle Eastern percussion loop. Oh, nice. Uh, and and or uh, sort of a, a Japanese... Um, Drum, what are they called? The, Taiko. The Taiko drums. Yeah. Going through like a five second reverb. Nice. Oh, gosh. Uh, and, and then on top of that, we've got uh, the French horn section, the string section, the flute section, the guitars. <laughs> but I mean, so, they're, not all, they're not all like that. But there's been an incredible challenge actually getting it all to sound uh, clear. Right. Well, given all these that, influences and the way yeah. you've you've melded these twists and turns who who might some contemporary artists be that either have influenced you or you at least appreciate would it be things along the line of siberian uh, trans-siberian orchestra anything like that or what are some of the more uh recent in the last 20 years type of artists that resonate with you if anybody so for me, um, if I go first, if I may, it's, um, so I've been playing a lot of uh, Eastern music 
and uh, I play the tar, which is a Persian instrument. So my influences over the last 20, 30 years have been Indian music, Persian music on one side, mm -hmm. and then on the, on, on the coming west, you know, the music that Zimmer does with the orchestration and, you know, is really good. And that influences me a lot. And then in terms of vocal, then no, I think I just, you know, like most singers, I don't like the sound of my own voice. So I just like, like to sing and see what happens. So that, that's me and the influences, I guess are hangovers from Genesis, yes, Pink Floyd, that kind of thing. Um, so I'm, I'm quite eclectic and I, I kind of mix it all up. That's so that, that's what I would say. Max? Uh, yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting. Uh, uh, one of my favorite uh, old 70s albums is the Blue Jays album, which was a spin off from the Moody Blues with Justin. Oh, I'm not familiar John with Lodge. that. Nice. Oh, um, Steve probably is, though. You familiar with that, Steve? Um, maybe. I'm not really sure. Okay. Yeah. But, so yeah. it's just called Blue Jays. Uh, okay. uh, and it was a very highly orchestrated album. And it's really interesting. Uh, years ago, I worked with a guy called Nicky James uh, in the UK who, who had been a songwriter on the Threshold label uh, with Moody Blues and did sort of tours with them as, as their support act and things like that. And uh, the, uh, uh, Nicky's keyboard player was a guy called Kirk Duncan. And Kirk was the keyboard player on, on, on that album. And I talked to Kirk about it several times, being my favorite, uh, one of my favorite 70s albums. Oh, nice. And he, but he uh, is absolutely adamant that it's overproduced, really, really overproduced in his mind. Huh. But I guess for the 70s, if you, if you guys have a chance to listen to it, it's quite interesting. Yeah. It's very, very curious. orchestrated, highly orchestrated, you know, which uh, a little bit unusual. The, so the overproduced, Max, or maybe overcomposed? Well, or arranged, you know. Or arranged, but, yeah. Uh, I, think, I think that's what, I mean, the thing, I think the reason that Kirk had that opinion is that there hadn't been any rock album that was so highly orchestrated before that. Mm. There had been orchestration in albums, but not as much as that that album really has a huge amount of orchestration. So, that, so that's been quite an influence on me, uh, actually, over the years, that album. Uh, and like Clive, I'm also, also a big fan of uh, Hans Zimmer uh, in terms of contemporary, uh, mainly because he, um, he hasn't had a formal training and uses such unusual choices of melody and rhythms. Right. He yeah, he's great with rhythm, isn't he? Yeah, absolutely. That's a big part of, of his work. Uh, and his melodies, he doesn't use recognizable modern scales very often. He'll just pick out a series of notes that sounds really yeah. interesting. Um, I think thinking back, the ELO is probably the closest. If they'd kept progressing, where you know the yeah, the the, the violin the, or the cellos. Well, violin. They, they did actually start off as quite a progressive band, ELO. Yeah, yeah. So that's, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah. Where you've got where you've got a fusion. I, I love fusion music. You know, give me a sort of Indian raga and mix it with some heavy bass guitar or something. I'm away. <laughs> that's that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And it up. Yeah. And Clive, what was it like bringing your daughter Anuchka to do some of the words that are said on Flower of Love? How did that come together? That was great. So um, we'd been working on some other stuff, and uh, Anuchka, she's uh, she's at Cambridge actually, and she writes. She's just written a novel, and she's quite into it, and she's a good blues singer. She plays with a blues band or sings with a blues band. So she was over here and I thought, when we were uh, Flower of Love, I thought, well, had the music and I thought, well, I'll, I'll sing it. I'll sing the, um, the lyrics to Flower of Love. And I thought, again, I thought that just doesn't work. And I just said, Anushka, uh, just before we have lunch, darling, do you mind coming to the studio? Can you just uh, recite this poem? And she looked at it and said, oh yeah, Dad, that looks good. Yeah, I'd love to. One take. Bye. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. How, how old? Uh, she's four years old. No, she, <laughs> four years old. She's 40. Nice. So, I'm an awesome. old 
Actually, she's more now. I think she's 42 now. So, um, yeah, she, she's a, got a great blues voice, uh, but she understands the mystical side of the lyrics. So she got it straight away. And, uh, yeah, it, I think it works well. It's different. Yeah, it's beautiful. That's great. Yeah, and we know that this is a new album, but are there plans to move forward with another Affirm album in the future? Always. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. Oh, oh good. Yeah. That's an affirmative. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I can affirm that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's good that's, to hear. Yeah, that's great, because th this is great stuff, and I love the album you two put out before this as well whispers like aspirations might be my favorite song on there yeah. so yeah great stuff um great. Are, cool yeah and uh are, are there any future plans for mabel greer's toy shop um well bob's living in mauritius now and he sort of he was stuck out there with the pandemic but no but i think there should be i mean it would be great to maybe in a year's time maybe next year we can do a another a mabel because uh it's a different sound um right love to do it and i think so bob i think probably would be up for it hugo who was on bass before he gets a lot of gigs in france i think he would be up for it um yeah i think we could do something be nice what do you think max yeah oh um, definitely <laughs> Yeah. Definitely uh, think there is scope for it, and and it has it is a band with its own sound, you know, and we can develop that. That's good. I, I um, would see that tour, Mabel Greer's opening for a firm. Mm, mm, yeah. Possibly that'd yeah, be yeah, cool. It's inter it would be an interesting. Yeah, just change um, clothes. Concept, you know, natural <laughs> concept. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah great yeah. idea. That's a great idea. Ma yeah. Mabel and a firm, a firm Mabel. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah we do that. So we just. You know whether we can get a couple of showcase gigs together so we'll work on that i guess that'll be this end of this year early next year maybe but uh unless you know who knows i mean you know we're, we're, we're game if anyone's got any ideas we'll we'll look at it we'd love to do a, a little tour or a few showcase gigs somewhere i've i've got an ambition to get together with clive uh probably next year and um try and record every single thing that he plays <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, wow. so it might sound a bit strange but um we've i've missed out so many absolutely amazing ideas that clive's just oh. just uh played in the studio while i'm editing or mixing something so one but of the things i get forever, from that you know, so i want to try and get together just purely for sort of jam session and record absolutely everything i know, love that max because um yeah. i'm kind of old school and yeah. i noticed this earlier in your language that you guys are more of a let's get in the same room kind of guys as opposed to hey it doesn't matter where we live let's just file share that's a great process it works on many levels but yeah there's nothing like getting in a room and letting that chemistry do what it does. I mean, how can you have a proper argument online when you can just be in the same room, right? Absolutely. <laughs> it works on every level. There, there's plenty of arguing online, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. But but I admire that, that that's like, it's all, it sounds like it's almost not even a thought, well, ah, I can't really get there for two months. Let's not put it off. Let's just do I love that you're just hell bent to get in the same room and do it that mm. way. That's well, it, really it, cool. Better things happen when we do, don't they? Yeah. When we actually sit sit in a room together, you know? So Yeah. It is it's quite it's quite amusing. But we're we're on the same wave musically, we're definitely on the same wavelength. So I mean if I come up with a little melody line, Matt Matt said, Whoa, whoa, hang on, what was that? And I'll go, well, I don't know, it's like that. Oh, yep, yeah. okay. And then it's just- well, that's how our Journey to the Sunshine started like that, didn't it? Oh, yeah. And it was like, well, is that strings? Is it lead guitar? Is it a vocal? What is it? Oh, well, let's but try that, this. That, just, that, that was a track that just started off with clients trying the guitar. And then it, it, it got really good and I carried on recording. It was in the moment track, wasn't and it? it turned, yeah. 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 And, and what is then, we've, we've got a little surprise at the end of it as well, haven't we? Uh, which is, 
sort of not quite so progressive and a little bit get your dancing shoes on sort of thing, you know, <laughs> on that track. But, I was going to say, was, what is I mean, that Queen album where you open the gatefold? I think it's all that jazz. You open uh-huh. the gatefold, not the one with the ladies on the bicycles, but the one where it, they're at Bear Studios, I think. And you just see everything. You see the timpani drums, I think a marching bass drum, part oh, of yeah. a drum set, a bunch of guitars. Yeah. Freddie's laying on the grand piano. It's just a room full of all the shit they're going to use to create. You know, yeah, and, yeah. and you can't do that the same way online file sharing and nothing against no. file sharing. There's been some great albums, great music, great soundtracks, yeah. great everything yeah. put together that way. But it's a different experience, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like it's like a, a really good conversation. Someone comes up if you're on the same wavelength, someone comes up with an idea and someone says, yeah, but let's arrange it like that. And yeah, OK, but let's add that. And you go dup, 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 like yeah. that. Yeah. You end up with something, and you can't do that if you're not in the same room, for yeah. sure. Yeah. It's for difficult. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And there's nothing like thinking back to that session, and there's the smell of that room. Was it the old Vox amplifiers heating up that they had there? Was okay. it the sage that got burned before you recorded? Was it... But when you're all on Zoom or file sharing at different places, it's that same room you're in all the time. It's a different thing altogether, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, if we, people must meet up more. Well, I think now the pandemic's so near as damn it over, that would be a lot easier. Yeah, enough yeah. to where we can start doing that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Great. A lot of I mean, Zoom is great. And look, we're having this conversation. We couldn't have had it otherwise. But yeah. people are going to start meeting up more, I think, now. Yeah, mm, I think so. Yeah, Pe- yeah, people need that. Yeah. Any last questions, Stephen? Well, we'll be in LA next week in your in your office. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> oh, wow, really? <laughs> I'll be in Las Vegas this coming weekend visiting some grandkids. Oh, Interesting. Great. How great. long will you be there? No, I'm joking. I'm sorry. Oh, I made it. oh. <laughs> damn! Uh, I'm like, I'm thinking, I gotta load my yeah. drums. <laughs> then, you know, zoom, 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 right, let's meet up. And then we're on the doorstep. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> oh, like, what are you guys doing when I. It's funny. Yeah. yeah, I don't get to jam. Not that I'm. Okay, so I don't make a lot of time to jam just because I'm so busy with my other businesses, Drum Talk TV, the largest online media company covering mm-hmm. the world of drumming. And then I have a marketing training business. I don't make a lot of time to play with other musicians. I don't gig anymore. But there's almost no musicians in this little community where I'm in that I could jam mm. with. The ones that are good are are out now on gigs. And it's kind of yeah, like yeah. I just put YouTubers, my CDs on. And well, as my wife likes to say, he just plays with himself. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Or Frankfurt, you know, you know which door to knock on. Yeah, I would love that because yeah, there's right. nothing like jamming with people in person. Uh, no, I absolutely. miss that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. it's yeah, fun. Yeah. Even just yeah. screwing around, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But good things come out of it when you just jam. Good things come out, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it really does. Mm. So I'll leave it to Steve to give any closing thoughts it's been wonderful having you guys on we're enjoying the album and uh hoping that people pick up on it steven's either put or putting the website and Bandcamp in the post cool. comments nice. and pinning that to the top we've also mm-hmm. tagged your facebook pages in the description as well and folks right. if you're listening mm-hmm. on anchor uh we'll do our best to load all that stuff well it would be by now if we've put this on anchor it should be in the description so that you can reach out and check this stuff out it's it's really refreshing and great to hear great music still being put out in 2022 you know <laughs> absolutely right so people can go to affirmbaileyhunt.com or they can go to baileyhunt.bandcamp.com and uh, for Maple Greer's Toy Shop, you could go to maplegreerstoyshop.com. So yeah, there's plenty of music to check out and it's great. And Bailey is Bay, B-A-Y-L-E-Y. Yeah, so that's just it. so you all know. 
It's the weird ones. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, it might end up on that other Bailey Hunt yeah. porn site or yeah. whatever. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah, funny so in, uh, living in Germany. I'm I'm not Mister. I'm not Max Hunt. I'm Herr Hunt. That's <laughs> right. That makes sense. How long did it take to get used to that? It's confusing because I'm sitting waiting in the dentist or something and, and I don't recognize my own name because they're pronouncing That's it. That's funny. Are you yes. married, Max? Are you married? Yes, I am. Do yeah, you make your wife call you that? No. No, she is German. She is German. Oh, and really? she, she She's had like 26 years to practice it, basically. Oh, that's funny. That's <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, guys, thanks for coming on. Keep us up to date with what you have going on. And certainly, if you come out here in the U.S. to gig, let us know. But even doing gigs out there in Europe, get some stuff yeah. on video and send it to us, and we'll share it around. Cool. Brilliant. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thanks for having us on the show. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for being on. The yeah. sensible yeah. questions. We appreciate that. Oh, well, <laughs> thank you. I'm going to leave that to Steve. <laughs> <laughs> hang on the line with us after we say goodbye folks thanks for following what Stephen and i are doing here on yes shift following all the shifts that go on through the yes not only band but the universe like these guys so yeah. keep following what we do this is episode 47 so if you've only seen a couple things by us dig back into the catalog on the youtube and facebook videos album and in the anchor catalog thanks everybody Thank you. Bye. Yeah.